In the previous video, we've talked about how digital certificates help with authentication and provide a safe and reliable key exchange process in TRS. Today, we will learn exactly how to generate a certificate and have it signed by a Certificate Authority, or CA. For the purpose of this demo, we want to submit our Certificate Signing Request, or CSR, to a real CA. Instead, we will play both roles, the Certificate Authority and the Certificate Applicant. So, in the first step, we will generate a private key and its sell-side certificate for the CA. They will be used to sign the CSR letter. In the second step, we will generate a private key and its paired CSR for the web server that we want to use TLS. Then finally, we will use the CA's private key to sign the web server's CSR and get back the signed certificate. In order to do all of these things, we need to have OpenSSL installed. If you're on a Mac, it's probably already there. You can run OpenSSL version to see which version is running. In my case, it's LibreSSL version 2.8.3. Let's open the browser and go to LibreSSL.org. Here we have a link to the manual of OpenSSL. The first command we're going to use is REC, which stands for request. As you can see, this command is used to create and process certificate requests. It can also be used to create a cell site certificate for the CA, which is exactly what we want in the first step. This X509 option is used to tell OpenSSL to output a cell site certificate instead of a certificate request. In case you don't know, X509 is just a standard format of the public key certificate. You can click on this lock button of any HTTPS website to see its certificate in X509 format. Alright, now let's get back to the terminal and run OpenSSL request X509, the new key RSA 4096. This option basically tells OpenSSL to create both a new private key with RSA 4096-bit key and its certificate request at the same time. As we are using X509 option, it will output a certificate instead of a certificate request. The next option is days 365. We specify the number of days that the certificate is valid for. Then we use the key out option to tell OpenSSL to write the created private key to ca-key.pam file. And finally, the out option to tell it to write the certificate to ca-cert.pam file. When we press enter, OpenSSL will start generating the private key. Once the key is generated, we will be asked to provide a passphrase which will be used to encrypt the private key before writing it to the PAM file. Why is it encrypted? Because if somehow the private key is hacked, the hacker cannot use it to do anything without knowing the passphrase to decrypt it first. Next, OpenSSL will ask us for some identity information to generate the certificate. First, the country code, the state or province name, the city name the organization name, the unit name, the common name or domain name, the email address, and that's it. The certificate and private key files are successfully generated. If we cut the private key file, we can see it says encrypted private key. The certificate, on the other hand, is not encrypted but only base64 encoded because it just contains the public key, the identity information, and the signature that should be visible to everyone. We can use the X509 command to display all the information encoded in this certificate. 
This command can also be used to sign certificate request, which we will do in a few minutes. Now let's run OpenSSL X509 and pass in the CA certificate file. We use the no out option to tell it to not output the original encoded value. We want to display it in a readable text format. So let's use text option and press enter. Here we can see all information of the certificate, such as the version, the serial number, the issue and the subject are the same in this case, because this is a self-signed certificate. Then the RSA public key and signature. I'm going to copy this command and save it to our gen.sh script. With this script, I want to automate the process of generating a set of keys and certificates. Before moving to the second step, I'm going to show you another way to provide the identity information without entering it interactively as before. To do this, we use a subject option. I'm going to add it to this OpenSSL request command and copy this information from the certificate, then change it to the correct format. Now let's add a command to remove all PAM files at the top of this script, then run gen.sh in the terminal. We're still being prompted for passphrase, but it doesn't ask for identity information anymore because we already provided them in the subject option. Great. Now the next step is to generate a private key and a CSR for our web server. It's almost the same as the command we used in the first step, except that this time we don't want to self-sign it. So we should remove this X509 option. This days option should be removed as well, since we don't create a certificate, but just a CSR. Then we change the name of the output key to serverkey.pam. And this file should be server-drag.pam because we are creating a certificate signing request. Now we should change all of the subject information to a web server's information. OK, let's run it. Enter a passphrase to encrypt the web server's private key. Then here we go, the files are successfully generated. Here's the encrypted private key. And this is a certificate signing request. I think you can notice the difference. It's not a certificate as before, but a certificate request instead. So now let's move to step 3 and sign this request. For that, we will use the same X509 command that we've used to display certificate before. Let's open the terminal and run this. Open SSL X509. This time we use a rec option to tell Open SSL that we're going to pass in a certificate request. We use the in option followed by the name of the request file. Next, we use a CA option to pass in the certificate file of the CA and the CA key option to pass in the private key of the CA. Then one important option is CA create serial. Basically, the CA must ensure that X certificate is signed goes with a unique serial number. So with this option, a file containing the next serial number will be generated if it doesn't exist. Finally, we use the out option to specify the file to write the output certificate to. Now, as you can see here, because the CA's private key is encrypted, OpenSSL is asking for the passphrase to decrypt it before it can be used to sign the certificate. It's a countermeasure in case the CA's private key is hacked. Okay, now we've got the signed certificate for our web server. Let's print it out in text format. This is its unique serial number. 
and we can also see a ci.search.srl file which contains the same serial number here. This issue section contains the information of the CA, which is text school in this case. By default, the certificate is valid for 30 days. We can change it by adding the days option to the signing command. As you can see, now the validity duration has changed to 60 days. If you remember the YouTube certificate that we've seen in the previous video, this certificate is used for many Google websites with different domain names. We can also do that for our web server by specifying the subject alternative name extension when signing the certificate request. Here we can see the X file option that allows us to state the file containing the extensions. We can see the format of this config file in this page. Let's search for subject alternative name. Here it is. There are several things that we can use as the alternative name, such as email, DNS, or IP. And it looks something like this. So let's try it. I will create a new file, server-ext.cnf and set the subject alternative name to dnsstar.peacebook.com. We can set multiple domain names. Let's say star.peacebook.org as well. I also add an IP 0000, which will be used when we develop on localhost. Now in this certificate signing command, let's add the X file option and pass in the name of the extension config file. Now the result certificate file has a new extension section with all the subject alternative names that we've chosen. Awesome! So looks like our automatic script is ready. Except for the fact that we have to enter a lot of password to protect the private keys. In case we just want to use this for development and testing, we can tell OpenSSL to not encrypt the private key so that it won't ask us for the passphrase. We do that by adding the notes option to the request command like this. Now if I run gen.sh again, it doesn't ask for passwords anymore. And if we look at the private key files, it is now private key, not encrypted private key as before. Cool. One last thing before we finish, I will show you how to verify a certificate is valid or not. We can do that with the OpenSSL verify command. Passing the trusted CA certificate and the certificate that we want to verify. If it returns OK, then the certificate is valid. And that's it for today's video. I hope it's useful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.